Hi, my name is Adam, and I love Journey Kids because it allows us to learn about the Word of God together. Whether you are online or in person, it is still so much fun that you are joining us today. This morning, we will get to worship, hear a story, and do some fun activities. Make sure your parents check out the parent guides on our website for fun activities that you guys can enjoy each week. Hope you have a great time. Bye. So we just guess what the emojis spell out? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it could be anything, like a movie or a TV show or a president. Who knows? All right. Okay. We can try to guess them together. Sound yeah, good? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Silhouette something, music. Something a, a, uh, a. Uh, a. Plus A plus singing, A. Sing, uh, sing, sing, uh, uh, sing Singapore. Singapore, the country. Singapore, yes. Whoa, nice job. I was not going to get that one. Um, iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, that was easy. I spent a lot of time on my iPhone. Uh, uh, Searching. Mag magnifying glass fish. I don't know. There's no magnifying Search. fish, is there? Uh, uh, finding Nemo. Yes? Yeah. I would have guessed Finding Dory, but that oh, was a great job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I love that Taco Bell. These are getting easier. All right. This one's going to be easy. 
uh, needle. Sewing thread, thread and sewing thread television. Sewing. Th- yep. Is, uh, yep. Needle. 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 Spool te- needle television. And needle spool. The television could be show. Oh, that's cool. Uh, like spool, spool. spool and spool. Show. Needle spool and sewing, sewing and sewing show. I have no idea. Do you have any ideas? No idea. <gasps> no. Oh! No. Needle. If you put a needle in the thread. Hello everyone, I'm Steven. And I'm Brandon. And this is the So-and-So Show. Oh, oh, that's what it was. Okay, <laughs> I get it now. Anyway, uh, how's your uh, post-holiday time going, bud? Oh, it's been going great. No I got a deep fryer for Christmas. Oh, yeah, wow. and I've been going crazy with it. You know, I really just miss the holiday foods so much. No, really not me. No, I tend to be kind of a picky eater, so. Well, I'm sure there was still plenty of stuff at Christmas dinner for you to eat. Mm, not really. Roast beef? Not for me. Mashed potatoes and gravy? (laughs) Not even a maybe. Cranberry sauce? I'd rather eat moss. Turkey and stuffing? You gotta be bluffing. Fruitcake? Mistake. Eggnog? Total slog. Hot cocoa? Huge no-no. Deep fried macaroni and cheese balls? Now that I'm into. Frankly, I'll eat just about anything that's been deep fried. (laughs) Really? Yeah, I guess it makes it easier because I can't see what I'm about to consume. Hmm, well that gives me a good idea. We're gonna expand your palate today, pal. That's right. We're gonna play a little game called... Deep Fried Mystery. Okay, as I said before, I've been going nuts with my deep fryer. I will give you a selection of deep fried foods and you're going to try and guess what they might be before biting into them. Sound good? All right, at least I don't have to go out for lunch today. Okay. All right. Ready? Yeah. Macaroni and cheese bites. Ah. So, Brandon, what do you think it is? Um, well, I think this is uh, this is what we've talked about before, the thing that started this whole conversation. I think this is a macaroni and cheese bite. <laughs> mm, this is so good! Yeah, well, I wanted to start you off with something easy. Mm-hmm. Next! Right. A fried Oreo. So, what do you think it is? Can I can I touch it? Yeah. All right. Kind of looks like a vanilla wafer or a macaroon or something oh. like that. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> can I try? You got me. Yeah, making me nervous. Yeah. Okay, here. here. Mmm. Oh, good. It's an Oreo. Yeah, it's a fried Oreo. What do you think? That's pretty tasty. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Want to try another one? Yeah. Let's do it. Deep fried watermelon. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It looked like half a donut or like a cinnamon roll or something. I don't know. Ew. You gotta try it. I don't like it. What do you mean, ew? It's just gross. You it's, didn't even it's know. It's falling yet. apart in my hands. Just take a bite. Okay, okay. Is that watermelon? It is! <laughs> Who fries a watermelon? I do. I did. (laughs) You have an opinion? I'm actually shocked how good it is. (laughs) These have all been winners so far. Well, we'll see how that holds up. What do you think about this next one? Next! (laughs) Salsa. (laughs) (laughs) This could be anything. Is it like a fried egg? Uh, No. Like a like cheese? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Try it. Okay. Try it. Spicy. Yeah. What do you think? Is it salsa? It's salsa! I've never had salsa before. And you know this stuff would go great with tortilla chips? You don't say. Yeah. I probably would have never tried it if it hadn't been fried. See, that's the point. You don't know what you like until you try it. Mm, I like this game. Hey, but we need to get this all cleaned up. Why? Because it's Bible story time with Cullen! Oh, of course. You got any more mac and cheese bites? I do. Hey, Kellen. Hey, fellas. What are we learning about today? Well, today we're talking about a huge moment in Jesus' life when he was baptized. 
But who could possibly baptize someone like Jesus? Stay tuned to find out that answer and more as we go Behind the Bible. Well, okay then, let's do it. John the Baptist was a cousin of Jesus. His clothes were made of camel hair, and for food, he ate locusts and wild honey. Okay, true. To look at John, he probably seemed kind of wild, but he was actually very special. You see, years before, a prophet named Isaiah said this about John. A messenger is calling out in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. John was the guy who would prepare the world for the arrival of Jesus. And he also dressed weird. Sure. John attracted so much attention, leaders in Jerusalem sent priests to find out more about him. People were coming up to me and saying things like, are you the one that God promised to rescue us? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? It wasn't any of those things. So I told them the truth. I'm just a messenger. I wasn't even good enough to untie the Messiah's sandals. John spent his time preaching to the people and baptizing them with water. People came from all around to be baptized. And then someone very special came. I look up and there's my cousin walking toward me, you know, Jesus. And he says, he wants me to baptize him, me, <laughs> baptize him. And I'm like, no, you should be the one baptizing me. But he said, let it be this way. It carries out God's holy plan. So I did it. John baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. And as Jesus was coming out of the water, John saw something incredible. I looked up and I saw what looked like a dove coming down from heaven the Holy Spirit coming to Jesus. That was when I knew for sure Jesus was the guy I'd been talking about. He was the Messiah, the, 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 the Lamb of God. It changed everything for me, for all of my followers too. John had many followers, but as soon as John discovered Jesus was the Messiah, he pointed his followers to Jesus. John had always said, I'm not the guy. Somebody better than me is coming. So we knew to keep searching for him, right? Well then, one day, I saw John point to Jesus and say, Look, the Lamb of God. So, duh, I start following Jesus. And I told my brother Simon Peter to come meet him too. Mm-hmm, <laughs> game changer. Some of my followers had a hard time following Jesus after following me for so long. So I said to them, he must become more important. I must become less important. The one who comes from above is above everything. All of it. John the Baptist, a man of great faith, and poor fashion sense. This has been Behind the Bible. Thanks. You're welcome. When John discovered something new, it changed him. He saw the truth about Jesus and shared that knowledge with the world. And he was able to change untold numbers with that knowledge. Maybe you can do the same thing. It's amazing what a little knowledge can do. See you next time, guys. Thanks, Kevin. I feel like I know more already. But do you know enough to know what's next? Let's see. Yes. Yes, I know. It's time to reveal the question. Today's question is, when have you discovered something new? I've discovered a bunch of new stuff I like to eat. And I discovered that you can deep fry watermelon. 
Honestly, every single day is a chance to learn something new, uh, whether it's watching an educational video or uh, reading a book or just talking to someone about an experience that you've never had. Yeah, like uh, y your grandparents, asking them about what things were like when they were your age. Yeah, or if you have a friend from another country, you can ask about their culture. Try to go to bed tonight having discovered something new. In fact, Brandon and I will pledge to do that right now. I'm in, but uh, we're gonna have to uh, cut the argle bargle. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> You'll have to look it up. I can't. I'm a flibberty gibbet. Oh, what's that? To the dictionary. All right. Until next time, I'm Steven. And I'm Brandon. And this was the So and So Show. We'll, we'll see, see you, you real soon. soon. Yep. Bye, everybody. <laughs> see ya. All right, let's see. What do well, I have? You said argle bargle. I said argle bargle. You said flibberty flibberty gibbet. gibbet? Flibberty gibbet. Starts, starts F, F L argle. Flibberty. Argyle. Anymore. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Ah! I caught it. That was it. it. That was, you had it. Have okay. I tried this yet? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. It might be my notepad. It looks like lasagna. Mmm, it could be fried lasagna. I did fry some lasagna. Yeah, honestly, I just fried a lot of stuff. <laughs> my shoe got into one of them right before oh, I did the okay. PB and J's.